Hi, I'm Eric, and I got this little show on the internet called... I've had a lot of requests for this topic, but I have to start by saying that I don't do this anymore. I used to do this, um, but I no longer do it. And the reason is because the price of axles has come down to a point to where it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do this because by the time you get done doing all this you could have just as easily swapped out the axles and went on your way. Uh, as far as saving money, you may think I'm weird for saying this, but don't change it. If you've got a CV joint that's clicking on turns, it's already done. So there's no point in doing anything but changing it out for something new. If you've got a boot that's ripped open, I say the same thing. I say let it go. And the reason for this is, is because I have actually taken a CV joint to the point of breaking. And it takes quite a bit. You can be driving along with CV joints that click for a really long time before they break. In fact, here's the way you differentiate the two. One that's about to go as opposed to one that's still okay. If you hear the clicking when you're driving straight down the road, definitely change it. But if it's on turns and it's not so loud, yeah, wait until you get the money to change out the axle and change out the axle. I wouldn't bother changing the boots out. But because you, the viewer, give me a lot of input and I want to give you what you want, I'm here today to show you how to change the CV boots on an axle. So this, as you can see, is a typical axle. Um, if I'm to guess, because this thing has obviously been sitting around for a while, I think this came out of an Acura Legend of like 90s vintage. Um, and I'm going to show you both how to take apart the inner joint and the outer joint. And just a quick word about CV joints. The inner joint will change its effective length. That's part of it, because as the suspension moves up and down, it needs to move in and out. And the outer joint, the reason why it's called a CV joint, constant velocity, continuous velocity, don't remember is so that it can pivot in all directions because as you steer the steering wheel and as the car goes over bumps it needs to basically do all this stuff. Step one. Personally, I like putting my axles in a vise. Ta-da! This way they're easy to work on and I can get to everything. Step two is to remove the old boot. These are the bands. You got one at the top and you got one at the bottom. I just take a pair of side cutters or dykes dig in and cut. Now, I'm just going to tell you straight off, I'm not going to replace this boot because this axle is junk, but I'm going to show you how. So this is purely for demonstration purposes. Okay, you got both of your bands, throw them away. Most efficient way to get the boot off, I just take a utility knife. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Nothing more dangerous than a dull knife. That's better. And then you can just peel it off like an orange. Yucky. Now we need to get the joint off of the shaft. Get your mind out of the gutter. Take a hammer and you notice right up in here, that's like the where the joint meets the axle. Take a hammer, and some of you might yell at me for not using like a brass hammer or something like that, but go ahead and yell at me. Comments below. And you want to strike so that the joint comes off and me, I pull at the same time. And there you go. Now your joint is off. These are kind of cool looking. And those ball bearings, Really nice in a slingshot, but I didn't tell you that. Next, you need to clean all the old grease, which means cleaning your shaft. Once again, you dirty-minded viewer you. All right, this guy is really important. The joint may come with a new C-clip. I don't recommend changing these out. Leave these on. The reason is because I've seen some of these clips that are too large, 
to whatever and cause a problem when you go to install the joint again. So leave the clip on. We also should clean out the joint itself. Best way to do this is with mineral spirits and a parts washer. Since I'm not replacing this boot for real, I'm not going to do this. But now is the reason why we came here. I do have this that was laying around, this mock boot, that at this point, actually it's not even for this axle, so I can't even put it on. But at this point, make sure you put your boot on, because if you put your joint back on before you put your boot back on, you just wasted all this time. So next, you want to install your boot. Sometimes I'll spray a little silicone on the inside of here to get it to slide onto the shaft easier. Quit it. Many times when you get a new joint, it'll come with grease, or a new boot, it'll come with grease. Hopefully it does. What I do with these is I'll just cut the end off and then take it, jam it into the joint and squeeze until I start seeing it come all around out, out of the circumference of the joint. Once you've done that, you've cleaned it, you've regreased it, you're ready to go. And by the way, don't waste your time putting boots on an axle that's clicking. It's a waste of time. Now this is the part that most of you are probably watching this for. This is where the magic happens. Now you've got your new boot installed. Take the C-clip and put it towards you so you can see those two little ends. Take your joint, put it on the outside there, and slip it up on there. All right, now you've got your axle on here. The splines are started. Now here is the cool part. Take a pocket screwdriver and push the ends of that in there. See how that went down just a little bit? Pushing one side, pushing the other. The whole time you're pushing down on the joint. And that way you know it's started. Then just take your hammer, okay, and knock it down. That's it. If you skip this step where you push this snap ring in, that will not go that easy. At this point you might be like, Eric, I, uh, okay, I got the joint on. And now I know you didn't install the boot, but how do I install those clamps? Good question. This part will vary. I clean off the outside of this. And you need plenty of rags to do this job. Uh, if you have, and I probably should have mentioned this before, if you have this style of clamp, I often put these on the shaft before I put the boot on. But you don't have to because you can just do that, wrap it around, bring it in. In order to put tension on this, you need said special tool. This is a special tool just for doing this. Bluepoint YA3080. This will goes onto the clamp like so, like that, and then you pinch it. And once you pinch it, it will draw this band tight. These are from Honda, and what you do with these is you wrap them around the boot, and then when you get to that place where it's wrapped around, you hook it in like so and push down. Then you take these here, these little tabs, and you bend those over with a hammer. And that's all you do. You bend them down and tap them in so that this can't come back up. There's another type that you'll need this special tool for. And this one is a KD, and it's a 3191 is what this is. The way these work, like I said, just take this, slide it through the end, go into here, put it through that slit. Now that you have it in there, you twist. Once you've got it tight and ready, pull up, release it, pull this through, bend it over. Then make your then make your cut, you know, after you after you hold it down so that it's locked in, and you're done. I think that covers some of the bands, but that's obviously not all the bands, but okay Eric, what about the other end? Okay, let's do it. 
principle is exactly the same. Take your side cutters, dig in, cut those clamps. Ow! Careful, they're sharp. I give a little twist at the same time. Same drill as before. So now that you've got that cut off, get your knife out. Peel it off. No longer need that. Inner CV joints don't have clips, but they do. And I would normally use a cleaner rag for this. But they do have cups that could fall out. So before you take an inner CV joint off, have a rag handy to catch some stuff that might be falling out. You can see the inside of that? Way different. So these cups just pull off. These are the actual bearings. This is the this is be the heart and soul of the joint. This one has three. Most that I've seen also have three. I take those and just put them into the other joint for like me to find. And of course in this case I would also be cleaning out the inside of this really well, cleaning up those bearings really well, and cleaning up the shaft. If you clean it for more than five minutes you're playing with it. Keep in mind I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm not actually reconditioning this axle. I'm showing you how it's done. So now you may be thinking, hey Eric, how the heck am I supposed to get a boot past that? Well astute viewer, I have a solution for you. Once again it involves a special tool. Um, this is a Mac tool. It's a P22A pair of pliers. And these are for snap rings. Okay. This is also a snap ring. You take said snap ring pliers, slip them in like so. And try to grab it with your fingernail, but if you can't do it with your fingernail, it's perfectly okay to grab like a pair of, or a uh, pocket screwdriver. How embarrassing. Normally I just do this and it comes right off. There we go. And then I just do not lose this. It's very important. Then all you need to do is sometimes it requires a little convincing, but and there you go. This thing's neat looking. Looks like art. So now your shaft is ready to accept its new boot. And to do that, you would just slip the boot over here. Now, you may encounter some resistance when you get down to this snap ring. I take said pocket screwdriver and slip it up under the boot like this and go around the circumference so I can push the boot down the rest of the way. Now that you have your boot and possibly your clamp, depending upon what clamp you have. So put the clamp, put the boot on. Now you can go back to, whoa. Back to your little friend here. Once again, you may require a little. Okay, if you're gonna do this, use a plastic or brass hammer. If you use like one of these hammers, you could break something. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll come out. I'll, I know there's probably somebody screaming at me right now, but here's, here's a hammer that is designed not to mar any of these surfaces. So it's either plastic or brass. And those people that are yelling are right. So feel good about yourself. You made Eric the car guy wrong. Good job. To install said snap ring, it is just the opposite of what it was when you de-installed it. Slip the tool in, spread it apart. Push it down, make sure it seats in. If this does not seat in, it will be a bad day indeed. So make sure that that gets into its groove because the groove is in the heart. These guys are cool because they normally these would be all clean and ready to go. You install these 
back onto our assembly. And without grease, they won't stay on. So keep that in mind. So if you want, if you have this at a slight angle like this and you're trying to get it on and these won't stay on, take a little bit of the new grease and put it on there. Now these Acura joints are weird because if you'll notice on this, one side is tapered and the other side is not. So you want to make sure you get your tapered side in there just right. These are, these are kind of goofy to try and put together. You'll also notice that inner joint grease is yellow. Do not mix inner joint grease with outer joint grease. There are two different types of greases. So you don't want to mix outer joint grease with inner joint grease because really they should be two different greases. Greases, grease, grease. Now it's simply a matter of reinstalling your cup. Okay, like I said, these are weird. You have to make sure that they're all lined up the same in the same orientation or else this is not going to work. Put the joint back on. You may need to spin some of these around. It's strange. And then once you get one to go down, you keep spinning the next one until it goes down. Until they all submit. There you go. Voila. It truly is the boot that holds this whole assembly on. So if you overextend this joint, like sometimes people do when this is on the car. Sometimes you got a heck of a time getting things back in here, but there's nothing holding this on but the boot. Keep that in mind if you go to get these out of the car. Make sure you pry back here and not um, try to just yank it out because it's not going to happen. So the same thing on the uh, bands on this. I'm just going to take it as you understand those uh, how those bands go on because I showed you on this outer joint. All right, I always like it when I can fill requests. A lot of people have requested this. Once again, why bother? Personally, like I said, I will, uh, I'll just put a whole new axle in it because you can get axles relatively cheap these days um, and it solves the problem. I and mean, if it's clicking when you're going on turns, you can get really nervous about it and replace it and I'm not gonna yell at you for it, but I can tell you from personal experience, you can go quite a ways on a clicking axle. I don't, co I don't consider a clicking axle a priority. Um, if you got bald tires in a clicking axle, put the tires on the car. To me, it's simple. But in case you uh, have a boot that's ripped and it's making the inside of your really pretty wheels dirty or whatever, here's how to replace that boot. And if the axle isn't clicking, go ahead and do this. It'll probably last a good long time, you know, probably until the next time this needs to be done because. Honestly, if these joints are properly lubricated, they last a good long time. So it's normally what happens is that boot rips open, dirt and other contaminants get in there and start to make the thing into one big mess. So if uh, you have good CV boots, then you'll keep this stuff out of here. Some, some auto manufacturers are more prone to ripping CV boots than others. I can say Hondas are pretty good for ripping CV boots. I'm done talking. I'm Eric the Car Guy. Uh, you can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com because I like it when you come see me there. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter because sometimes you'll find out when I'm shooting videos just like this or sometimes I just want to talk about stuff. Or you can find other stuff over at my other channel, ETCG1, that's not mechanically necessarily mechanically related and you want to know more about what I'm doing, if you care. Until next time, try to enjoy the daylight. And stay dirty, because it's fun. And doing this, you're going to get dirty. So, enjoy.